Okay, we continue with the, the biographical script, sketch of the great revivalist from Norway, Hans Nielsen Hauga. In the summer of 1801, Hauga, <coughs> Hauga astounded his followers and critics alike by becoming a citizen of Bergen, besides permitting him to operate as a merchant. Hauger's citizenship papers legitimized his traveling, countering the charges of vagrancy that were being made against him. While in Bergen, he purchased a business property which was managed on his behalf by Johann Luz, or Luz, who had married Hauger's sister, Karen. Hauger also purchased a small fleet of boats. At the end of 1801, Hauger made a preaching tour on foot up the western coast of Norway to the fishing station in Jeslingen. There he met up with his ships, which had sailed up the coast, bringing corn to exchange for herring and cod before returning to Bergen. In the two years which followed, Hauger made extensive circular tours of Norway, during which he preached at every opportunity. The first in 1802 began in Bergen and took Hauger through Lardo, Hallingdo, and Numedal. To Tuna, and then back to Bergen via Tonsberg, Shen, Hallelujah, here we are in Shen, and Telemark. We must read about that 1802 journey if we can help it and find any information. The journey of 1803 to Cargo as far north as Tromsø, from where he returned south through Namdalen, Trondheim, Gudsbrandsdalen, Christiana, Telemark, Settersdal, Kristiansand, and Stavanger. Hauga arrived back in Bergen in March 1804. Hauga's last journey in summer 1804 took him by boat from Bergen to Stavanger and then on to Denmark. It is thought that his intention was to petition the king concerning what he considered his right to preach and write. But he returned to Tuna without having presented his case. On October the 29th, 1804, en route to Bergen, Hauga was arrested for the 11th and last time at Eicher paper mill. Thus, Hauga's travelling came to an end. In eight years, he had covered a distance of 7,000 kilometres, mainly on foot, preaching everywhere he travelled, sometimes four times a day. And everywhere he went, he had usually been accompanied by someone who carried and distributed his books. After a short time in Hoxen prison, Hauger was transferred to a cell in the Rothhus in Christiana, while his case was being investigated. He was held on four charges. 1. Alleged breach of vagrancy act. 2. Alleged breach of trading laws. 3. Alleged breach of laws concerning freedom of the press. 4. For breaking the conventicle act. Hauger's case was one of the longest in Norwegian history. Judgment and sentencing did not take place until December 1813. During the years between his arrest and sentencing, Hauger suffered deteriorating health. In the first year of his imprisonment, he went out into the fresh air on only three occasions. The eventual intervention of Chief Justice Bull gave Hauger some access to the outside world, including a few months of freedom helping to set up salt works in Surlander, during the English blockade. Hauger was finally sentenced to two years hard labour in Arkushus Castle, narrowly avoiding a sentence of life imprisonment. He appealed to the higher court against his, this sentence, and action resulted in him being cleared of financial misdealing. The new judgment passed on 23rd of December 1814, resulted in a fine of 1,000 riksdaler for breaking the Conventicle Act and breaching the laws concerning freedom of the press. Hauger's property and possessions have been impounded and sold after his arrest in 1804. After his release in 1814, his fine was paid by contributions from his followers and Hauger moved to a farm at Bakker provided by his brother. The next year, Hauger married Andrea Nuhus, who died in childbirth within 12 months of their marriage leaving Hauger with a baby son. Hauger subsequently moved to a farm at Bredvet and married Ingeborg Olfdatter. All three of their children died in infancy.
This man suffered. This man suffered. Despite Hauger's continually deteriorating health, his farm became the central focus of the Haugian movement, and he received a stream of visitors. In his final years, Hauger wrote some of his more well-known titles, Hans Nissen Hauger's Reise, Religiöse Verlöse, and Utog of Schick, a historian. Hauger died on 29th of March, 1824, aged 53. Okay, so that is the summary of the life of Hans Nielsen Hauger. Uh, as you saw, his, he had a very sad uh, situation with his wife and children. Oh my goodness, may Yahuwah have mercy on our souls. May, may Yahuwah have mercy on our souls. So, let us pray that Yahuwah is going to touch Norway once more. And maybe we can pray also that those whom he uses to touch them will be a blessing and will grow up to be a blessing. Amen. In Yeshua's mighty name. Amen.